Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For this tutorial, we're going to discuss regular expression validation tests in Oracle. Regular expressions work on text values much like the prior video in this playlist set. The upsides to regular expressions include flexibility and power, you can do almost anything, and it's easily configurable, the, it's separated from the code. The downsides to regular expressions are complexity, it's hard to read and debug, and less performant, think table scan. Before we get started reviewing each regular expression sample test case, I wanted to share two important tips about using a search engine to shortcut your development time. Tip number one, Google or Bing or whatever and search on the term regular expression and then <clears throat> whatever uh, data type of interest like phone number. So if I look up phone number, I'm gonna get all kinds of examples here and I can just pop it open in a new tab. And look at that, a whole bunch of discussion and then examples of different regular expressions for different patterns. There's no point in uh, reinventing wheel when others have already put in far more time than you on this. But do pull the ideas from here, combine ideas and test. Tip number two is to find a builder or a tester. So again, regular expression, and we're gonna look up builder. Yeah, tester, builder, whatever. I'm gonna do builder. My favorite's the third one here. Popped it open in a new tab. You put in your test string, your raw data. You're going to get an explanation. You're going to get errors, matches, all the details. It's a really great tool. So that's one. And these other ones over here also look, I haven't used them, but they look great too. And the third one here, and, and you could go on. But Close. Paste in a text sample. Highlight what parts are important. And then do your regular expression. And we're going to start off with uh, test case 45, regular expression. Verify is phone number. So in this, the magic happens here in the regular expression like <clears throat> Oracle SQL command. And the two parameters are the phone number field and the regular expression string. And this regular expression string says characters zero through nine are allowed for three digits. And then there's some kind of a separator, either a hyphen, a dot or a space. And then there's three numeric digits again and then there is either a hyphen, dot, or space, and then there are four numeric digits. So that's a, an American phone number, US phone number, North American phone number. If you want, you can use this regular expression up here pattern, and that's for international phone numbers as well. And you can always, like we saw in the prior section, go Google regular expression phone number, and you'll get all kinds of examples, and you can play with them. So let's play with them. Um, take the middle SQL here, we're gonna execute it. So when I run it, the inner, SQL query, you can see that we get the phone number and pass, and it's three digits, it has a dot for a separator, et cetera. If any were a fail, you could see what the value is, and that helps you find it, troubleshoot it, and fix it. So if we run the outer SQL, since everything was a pass on all those individual rules, rows, it will all roll up into a single P for a pass. If we wanted to do a social security number, check, same general format, except that uh, the field name per SSN called fake SSN is listed and it's the first parameter of the regular expression like command and then our regular expression string. That's really the only part that matters on the rest of these that we're gonna demo. So for social security number, it's three digits and then a dash and then two digits and a dash and then it's four digits and it ends. And so if we run the inners SQL, we get all these values. Let's move along to is zip five. All the same structure, except we have zip five being returned and zip five is the first parameter and our regular expression string is return a fail if it is not the digits nine, uh, zero through nine repeated five times. Well, it's either a not or a starting. I think it's actually a starting operator. Ah, Googled Wikipedia, that little hat operator, the shift and the six key on the keyboard that means it matches the starting position within a string. And the dollar sign means it matches the ending position of the string. Moving along to test case 48, we're gonna look for a, whether the zip code is five or nine digits. And let's just run the data. Sometimes it's five, sometimes it's four. We want it to pass in either scenario. So now that you can see the data down here, it's easier to describe. So it has to start with a digit and have five of them. And then optionally, parentheses, it can have a minus sign and then four digits, and it has to end with that. 
So that is how the logic works there. The magic is right there in that regular expression string. Test case 49 is the same, except it's zip nine, not zip five or nine. So it only has nine digits, which actually makes me wonder, this one's wrong. The first five digits shouldn't be optional. It should be mandatory like that. So you have five or nine. Let's rerun this and see. Pass, 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 pass. See, that's more accurate back on the prior test case and everything passes because the old way I could have had dash and four digits and it would have said, yeah, that's good, but it's not. So this is a better regular expression. And you're going to find that when you go out and pull regular expressions online, you're going to find like the parentheses there, like I did copy paste it in. It's wrong. You need to actually go analyze it, test it and tweak and play with it and dial it in better. Moving along to test case number 50, we're going to demonstrate the regular expression only text. So we're going to look at the last name column with the regular expression like, and we're going to run this expression string, which says it must start with and end with one or more. That's the plus is lowercase a to z, uppercase a to z, or spaces. That's all that are allowed. So let's run it and look at our data. There's all the names. They're all passes. So it works. It works nicely. There's a corresponding test 51 complementary, I should say, regular expression that's going to look for only numeric digits. And so we're going to look in the <clears throat> zip5 field on the regular expression like command, and we're going to make sure that it starts with and ends with one or more zero to nine characters. Highlight and run the internal subquery. There's our, they were, the values were one through five, and they're all a pass. No leading or trailing spaces. So if you have a string, you don't want to space, blah, 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 or blah, 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 space at the end. So last name, we'll use that again in the regular expression like, and we're going to say that it cannot start with a space. Well, if the last name starts with a space or parentheses in that little pipe symbol means an or, or ends with a space, then fail. And so if we run that, we get all the names and they're all passes. Test case 53 is much like test case 52, except we're looking for no white space anywhere in the string. So we're going to use the job ID, regular expression like, and we're going to say, is there a white space anywhere in the string? So white space can be a space, a tab, a carriage return, line feed, etc. So we're going to run this, execute it, and they're all passed. Now, I thought that was a space. It threw me and I wasted 10 minutes. It's not. It's an underscore. I copied it. And I'm going to go paste it in notepad so you can see that's an underscore, SA underscore rep, out of space. Moving along to test case 54, only lowercase. So we're going to look at the first name. We're going to do something tricky. We're going to mix and match. So you sure we have regular expression like, but the field we're going to use is actually a part of a field. We're going to go to character position three and then read two characters because I know the data doesn't have any uppercases there. There's no like McDaniels or anything like that where it has an uppercase. So let's run it. And the third and fourth positions are always lowercase. That's why they always get a pass. But the useful regular expression string here is the hat must start with, the dollar sign must end with, plus sign one or more, a to Z, lowercase alpha. That's all that it can contain. We, test 55 is a regular, regular expression test for only uppercase. And we're going to look at email. The whole thing's uppercase mostly. And we're going to take the substring 3, 2. And our regular expression string is just like the last one, basically. Starts with, ends with, uppercase A to Z, one or more. Run this. Look at the data. They're all uppercase. They all pass. Moving along to test 56, title case. We're going to take the first name. Actually, I'll just show it to you. I'm going to run the inner. It's easier to explain from there. So there's the first name, and we want to make sure that it's proper case. So the first letter of every word has to be uppercase. Do we have any multiple? There should be multiple somewhere in here. Actually, I trimmed it out of the set. That's too bad. But anyway, I uh, took the first name, put it there. And I wanted to troubleshoot, so I took the substring of 1, 1, because I was playing around with the next clause, and I wanted to make sure I was pulling the proper value. So I dumped that in. And then our case logic to derive the status field. So what we have going on here is the first case wins, 
operate in sequential order. So this fires, and if it catches it, that's it. It exits out. If not, it goes to the next, short circuits, or goes to the next and works way down. So the regular expression, if it is not the first character in A to Z, uppercase, then trigger an error that says, hey, the field first name and the first character of that is not uppercase. So I wanted to catch that. And I had to do this check because this one down here wouldn't operate on the first. You'll see why in a minute on the first word. The next thing we check for is, so we know that the first character is uppercase. Now we go say, okay, is the first name, does it only have one word? There's no other spaces in there? If so, it's a pass, we're done. If it passes this, first character is uppercase, and it's got multiple words in it, then we go on to this, which says, take the first name field, put it in regular expression like, if it's not such that there's a white space or a space, and then an uppercase A to Z. So after every one of the white spaces, the first letter has to be an uppercase A to Z. That's what it's saying. But because it's looking for a white space to find the words at the space break, then it'll never catch the very first word. And that's why I had to put this check in here. So anyway, all of this logic will test for a proper case. And moving along, let's look at the email address and do a regular expression for that. And this one I went and pulled off the web and tweaked and played with it. But uh, test 57, if the regular expression is not like, for an email address, this string, pop an error. So let's just run the inner pieces here. Let's see what we have. So we have some email addresses. They're all going to be some name at some company.com or whatever. And so what the regular expression is going to do is it's going to say it has to start with upper or lowercase alpha, numeric digits, and it can have a dot, underscore, percent, plus, or dash, and that's it. So it can have those characters in the beginning, and they can repeat, and then there has to be an at sign, and then we have the same, any of these valid characters, lowercase, uppercase, numeric, minus, or hyphen. So we can have those, and then we're going to have a, I had to escape the period with a backslash, so then we're going to have a, a period, right there, and then we have upper lowercase alpha only, two to four characters for .com. So it could be like .co or .anything else. It's two characters, or it could be three, which is very common, or it could be four. That's what this is. And if it's not matching this pattern, it'll get a fail, otherwise it gets passed. These all passed. Test case 58, we're gonna verify a URL. Look this one up on the web too. And basically it's gonna say, let's go run it. So we can look at our URL values, put in a couple of test ones. They all pass and then the nulls pass. So really all it's checking for the URL is http colon slash slash. To download the SQL scripts in this video, open a browser. In the URL, go to www.github.com slash Data Research Labs, all one word. It pops up, click the SQL Scripts link, or filter to find it, and scroll down till you see the data validation scripts in the markdown language. Click it, and scroll down. Now, I don't have the green plum links built or the SQL Server, and I don't have the videos built. They will be, it's just gonna take time. But for our purposes here, let's go to Oracle. Let's look at, I'm sure, let's look at the, uh, diff checks. Right click, open in a new tab. And in this case, all the details are collapsed. So expand it. Big bunch of SQL that's going to schema diff and tell you source to target whether the structure's changed. And you can hover over this little clipboard, click that, and voila, you've copied it. And if I were to go over and open up a notepad and paste that in, there it is, there's all the SQL properly formatted. So that is how you open up and use the SQL scripts from this video and all the rest of the videos. Thank you for watching and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right.